The purpose of this short video is to demonstrate the advantages of the direct reading leading edge angle of attack indicator for the control of slow flying and the approach to the stall and to suggest how this might help with the current problem of loss of control in flight due to episodes of unintended stalling. I fly on Aeropract A22 Foxbat off a farm strip in Dorset, England. The aircraft is a high-wing, three-axis microlight with a thick aerofoil at 16% and full-scale flaperons, which gives it excellent slow flying characteristics and a slow, very gentle stall, actually almost too gradual for this demonstration, which is primarily about stalling, as it can be difficult to define the actual moment of the stall and the aircraft continues to fly quite nicely when stalled. This is a view from the forward viewing camera, showing also my head-up display. The instrument on the right is a GPS ground speed indicator. The centre instrument is a sensitive airspeed indicator. A note of caution here, the pitot head in this aircraft is on the strut below the wing. As the angle of attack increases, the increasing pressure below the wing increases the pitot static pressure, and at the stall speed, the airspeed indicator underreads by about 12 to 15 miles an hour. The left-hand instrument, a row of lights, is an advanced flight system sport electronic angle of attack indicator. The mirror gives the forward viewing camera a view of the leading edge angle of attack indicator. This is the instrument. It consists of a length of vent wire stuck to the leading edge of the port wing just outside the prop wash to which a length of red knitting wool has been tied. The wool indicates the actual direction of the airflow as it approaches the leading edge of the wing. The end of the wire is bent back and angled upwards and this is the leading edge stalling angle. If the wool is below the wire, you are not stalled. If it is above the wire, you are stalled. It is that simple. The front section of the shaft is aligned with the cord line of the clean aerofoil. The angle between the wool and the cord line is the angle of attack at the leading edge. The scale gives the number of degrees below the stall, as it is the stall that is the critical point of interest when flying close to it. I am flying the aircraft level, so that the horizon represents the direction of incidence of the undisturbed free stream airflow, and the conventional free stream angle of attack in this situation is therefore given by the pitch angle, that is to say the angle between the cord line and the horizon. You will see that the leading edge angle of attack at this distance in front of the leading edge is twice the conventional free stream angle of attack, indicated by the angle between the cord line and the horizon. This is the case throughout the range. This distant difference is due to the increase in pressure beneath the wing at increasing angles of attack, extending a long way forward of the leading edge, deflecting the airflow upwards. An aircraft will stall if and only if its angle of attack is increased up to or beyond its stalling angle. It is the angle of attack which is the primary determinant of the stall, and it is your relationship to the stall which is the dominant consideration when slow flying. If you are using the airspeed for monitoring of slow flight, then you are actually using it as a surrogate for the angle of attack. The problem with this is that the relationship between the airspeed and the angle of attack is not immediate and it is not constant, both of which I will now demonstrate. OK, we're in a clean glide. OK, coming up to the stall. Yeah. Uh. 
I think she went there. Half flap. Yep. It's full flap. There she goes. Half flap. Okay, 45 degree bank turn. Bring the speed back. Still on half flap. There she goes. Looks gliding at 70. 4G pull up. Now, there she went. No perceptible bucket. There she goes, yeah, 36. Okay, we've got 3,500 RPM and the mouse slowing down. And we went at about 25 miles an hour. Remember, the stalling speed at my present rate is 32 miles an hour without throttle on. If I now increase this to full power. Okay, we have full power. This clip of a takeoff is in slow motion. We have half lap. The Foxbat has a tailwheel and I am putting the tailwheel on the ground. The pitch angle is then 11 degrees, which is the conventional free stream stalling angle with half lap. As I open the throttle fully and the aircraft gathers speed, the wool of the leading edge angle of attack indicator at first shows the surface wind, then becomes horizontal, then angles up to the leading edge stalling angle of 30 degrees. The aircraft then lifts off at about 22 miles an hour. So the speed at the stall can vary between different conditions of flight. In a slow aircraft like this, some of the differences may not seem great in numerical terms, but proportionately they are significant. The leading edge angle of attack at the stall remains essentially unchanged. This is a huge advantage in slow flying. With the leading edge angle of attack indicator, you know just where you are in relation to the stall instantly and at all times. With the red knitting wool, there is nothing to go wrong. There is no lag, no delay, no corrections, no smoothing, no adjustments. Simple, straightforward, direct, immediate. What you see is what you get. Below the wire, not stalled. Above the wire, stalled. Regardless of all other circumstances. The angle of attack is determined by the position of the elevator and the position of the elevator is determined by the position of the control column. If the elevator position is changed, the angle of attack response is immediate and dead beat. There is no hunting, no delay in confirming you are where you want to be. You are also adjusting one visual angle, the angle of attack, by altering another angle, the angle of the control column, and this is intuitively easier to do than where the inputs are dissimilar. It also takes much less visual adjustment to take a quick look at the leading edge angle of attack indicator, which is within the edge of one's visual field when looking forward. In turbulence, you can directly assess the degree and limits of the effects of the turbulence on the angle of attack and therefore assess your margins of safety directly and these will be much finer than if you were using the airspeed. You will have much more confidence in your relationship to the stall.
Here, the airspeed is varying wildly, but even if it drops below the stalling speed, while you will lose lift and start losing height, provided that you do not pull back on the stick, you will not stall, so that you will remain in control of the aircraft and able to initiate a response. Since the immediate effect of altering the position of the elevator is to alter the angle of attack, with all other effects being secondary to this, and since the angle of attack is the primary determinant of the stall, and the airspeed is not an accurate and constant guide to the angle of attack, it surely makes sense to control slow flying and the approach to the stall with reference to the angle of attack rather than to the airspeed and to use the elevator to control the angle of attack and the throttle to control the glide angle. The final overwhelming advantage of using the angle of attack to monitor slow flying is that with every approach or practice force landing, the pilot reinforces his or her intuitive grasp of the relationship between the position of the control column, the position of the elevator, the angle of attack and the stalling angle. It is sadly apparent from reading accident reports that not all pilots have had a sound intuitive grasp of this relationship and this can put any aircraft at risk from the humble light aircraft to a mighty Airbus. There is a lot of discussion currently about pilot distraction in the causation of loss of control in flight. In cases of unintended stalling, I think that this is getting it the wrong way round. All pilots continue to be able to keep their wings level, whatever else is going on, and in the same way they should also possess to almost the same level the intuitive awareness that pulling back on the control column increases the angle of attack and that, that at the end of this progression lies the stall. Of course, the best way for everybody to acquire a proper appreciation of the approach to the stall and coping with unusual positions is for all trainees to have a few hours in a pit special. But given that this probably is not practical, the routing use of a leading edge angle of attack indicator will go some way towards inculcating an intuitive grasp of the relationship between the elevator position and the angle of attack in the approach to the stall. And I would also suggest that a bit of benoit attached to the leading edge of the wing with a length of red knitting wool tied to it is the paradigm against which all other angle of attack indicators should be judged.